You're probably using ChatGPT the wrong way to learn Python or any other programming language. And if you're not using it, you're missing out. As a software engineer using ChatGPT on a daily basis, there are pitfalls that you want to make sure you avoid, regardless of what you're doing with it, so long it relates to coding. But first, you need to decide what to learn Python for. The three main things Python is used for are web development, data science and building AI applications. So while your roadmap, we'll get to it in a minute, will have the same basics regardless. After that, the path you decide will determine what libraries and tools you will learn and dive deep on. So before you use ChatGPT to learn Python or any technical tool or programming language, you want to make sure that you build knowledge and that you're not just become more reliant on ChatGPT because it will make mistakes and be inaccurate. To avoid that, what you should do is to first always read and understand the code that ChatGPT is writing out. When it gives you code snippets, even though you have the urge, if you're just going to copy and paste, you will be digging yourself two holes. The first one is that you will run run into bugs that will take you more time to debug than writing the code yourself to begin with. And second, you will really not be learning anything. When it gives you code, first read it. And if you don't understand something, ask ChatGPT about it and only then proceed. This segues into the second thing you should do to gain value from ChatGPT acting as your tutor instead of shooting yourself in the foot, which is to test the code that it gives you often. Testing is what you should do when you code because more often than not, you will realize that the program or the piece of code that you wrote is actually buggy, especially when ChatGPT gave it to you. I don't like it and I don't trust it. This way you will spot bugs early and fix them fast and you will be actually learning rather than going through multiple iterations of prompts and updating your code. And then you would be running into multiple issues and bugs one after the other where the whole thing is better rewritten than fixed. Lastly, make sure to read documentation. Sometimes ChatGPT won't be able to answer you thoroughly or accurately and sometimes it will just not be helpful. Because of that, you want to make sure that you're not neglecting documentation and reading it especially for important or common things that you use so that you learn from the source of truth and the full extent of what you can do with it. Now, documentation can often suck. Sometimes there is a lot to read or you have no idea where the starting point is. So use ChatGPT to direct you to the documentation that you should read and also use it to clarify things when they're a little bit complicated to understand. Make sure to follow these three points to extract the most value from ChatGPT instead of shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, so with these in mind, the first thing that you're going to do to learn Python is to ask ChatGPT for a roadmap to learn Python and include resources. So there is a lot here and you don't really need to dive deep into data structures, error handling and object oriented programming concepts because you will cover all the basics in the intro course. Anything more than a brief introduction would be a waste of time because you won't be able to apply everything right from the get-go so it would stick. Let's prompt it again, but now ask it to create a Python roadmap for a specific use like web development, data science, or building an AI application. Now this is better. We separate the wheat from the chaff and can focus on what's important instead of going through lots of concepts and features in Python which we will forget by the time we need to use them. ChatGPT recommended us the core libraries of data science. At this point, after learning the basics of Python, you can actually cherry pick what you want to learn first rather than sticking to a strict order. But unless you're only interested in learning what the different libraries are, you should start with the end in mind. So let's ask ChatGPT for example projects where we would apply the different libraries mentioned in the roadmap. Now we have a specific roadmap that we can follow and we also know what are some projects that can help us build our foundational knowledge before we move into more advanced stuff. Let's use ChatGPT to give us the code structure to implement the project from this list. Reading the code, we can see that we are importing some libraries that we're going to use and we are loading some data into a variable using pandas. Since we don't have data, let's ask ChatGPT for it. 
Okay, so let's ask it for a little bit more data. Now let's ask it what these different methods from the libraries actually do. Looks like we're just splitting the data into train and test set. We are providing the ratio and some random seed number to make sure that we're not duplicating the split if we run this again. This is good enough, but if I were to use this method again and again, I would ask for the documentation so I could read more deeply and learn better what I can do with it. Repeating these process to expose yourself each time to a different library or tool will help you to become familiar with data science pretty quickly. But to continue building on your knowledge, it's important to challenge yourself. And you can have ChatGPT help you here as well by guiding you throughout a large open source project codebase. Or in the case of our example with data science, I would participate in competitions on Kaggle. And when I just start and have no idea what to do, ask ChatGPT for pointers and guide me towards the right track. These are some random must-dos that I highly recommend you use ChatGPT for as you learn Python. So when you write code, especially in the beginning, have him review your code and ask for feedback. Then you can ask him to refactor your code to see what might be done better and write tests to it so you can start learning how to test your code. It's going to be far from perfect, but you will iterate on them and it will give you a direction that would be especially helpful early on. Ultimately, think that you have someone available to you 24-7 and it will not get annoyed no matter how many times you ask it. So use it. I haven't mentioned BART because I haven't used that nor ChatGPT4 for programming as of yet. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.